I mean, in terms of HR evolution over the last few years, I don't think it's ever been faster. I think HR is keeping up with uh, the business in the way that it's had to do by necessity. And uh, the way the world and business is changing means that uh, HR has to be far better than it was before and far more linked to the business, far more commercial, far more orientated with uh, the business's objectives and results than in the past. And I think we're seeing clear evidence of that. A leader once told me that um, a business that took 50 years to create could be out of business in two years because of the volatility, the uncertainty, the pace of change, the amb ambiguity. The same is somewhat true of HR. If HR professionals can't unlearn, relearn, and continue that cycle of learning, they'll be out of date. And the good news is most HR professionals are getting it. Not all of them, but most of them are getting it. The best HR people create value. And value is never defined by the person who does the work, but by the receiver. And so the best HR people are finding out who's going to give value and who's the, who are the value getters from the work that I do. Not just the employees or line managers, but also customers and investors. And when HR can connect that and create value, then, then they're going to be much more successful in the work that they do. And most HR people are headed that way. I think from our perspective, we're seeing increasing evidence that uh, really great HR leaders are as much in touch with customers as they are with their customers within the business, so their own colleagues or employees, and increasingly beginning to be the lead communications officer across the business. I think that's backing that's up what David's yeah. saying. We, for 15 years, we've done what we call strategic HR. And the metaphor has been really simple. Look in a mirror and create your HR practices. Hire, staff, train, against strategy. We now take that metaphor and say, think of that mirror as a window. Look through it and begin to connect HR to the customers, the investors, community leaders outside the company. So instead of having the employer of choice as the mantra, we're the employer of choice of employees our customers would choose. And we look outside to begin to create the practices inside. And the best HR folks, I think, are starting to do that. I definitely think that HR professionals are on the way to being wider professionals, broader professionals, having greater influence on the boards of companies, without a doubt. I think one of the key reasons for that is that companies in these very much more competitive times, whether it's company against company or country against country, they're all, only, they're all after the same thing and they're all after the same customers. The voices that uh, go into business leadership today is, a, today is far more influenced by those that speak to and communicate with those customers. And of course, that's colleagues, employees. And therefore, HR has a louder voice if it takes that input and refines it appropriately for boards, then they have a much more relevant voice. And it's perhaps uh, a time when there is more interest in precisely what customer voice is. So we can get, as a, as a, as a profession, uh, more understanding of what's behind the customer's intentions articulated through our own people in this, in this area of various communications. And I think uh, HR is still a greater role to play going forward and it's developing. HR has great influence in the markets in which we work. I have the privilege of speaking to a lot of HR groups and I often say, what does it take to be a great HR professional? And the answer is often, know the business, know the business. We'd argue today that's incomplete. Knowing the business means finance and strategy. We argue that you have to become a strategic positioner, that you have to know the business well enough and the customers, the investors, the environment in which you work so that you can position your company to be successful. And once you are a strategic positioner, then when you sit at the table, you have the ability to influence. Mm. A friend of mine, um, and this is a bit of a long story, I'll do it quickly, was so excited. She got called to join the board and the table and she went to her first meeting and the discussion was capital structure, the debt ratio, the covenants and how they funded the firm. And she said, I learned a lot. The second meeting was the global strategy. How do you do business in Indonesia, Vietnam and some of the emerging markets? She said, I learned a lot. The third meeting was innovation, their new technologies, their new direction. I learned a lot. And in the fourth meeting, she wasn't invited back you didn't have anything to say. HR folks have to enter those meetings with a point of view so that they can position the company. We've synthesized that and it's far too simplistic, but we've said there's three things we, we deliver. One is talent. What talent do we need when we go to Indonesia? The second is culture capability. What does our organization need to be good at? And the third is leadership. And when HR people position their company and then build talent, culture, and leadership to deliver their goals, they're probably going to have great influence.